and we're live. Hello, my name's Marianne Nixie and I'm based in Lincoln. I'm here today at the SAA headquarters to do a demonstration of Sky in Oil. Now what I've got for start off with, I've got this Frisk canvas which is 10 inches by 12 inches, kindly supplied by the SAA for me today. And then I have got in front of me here some oil paints. Now I've, you can see there's two different whites here. One of these, this one here, is soft mixing white and this one over here is titanium white. And the reason that I've got the two of them is titanium white can be a bit overly chalky, a bit overly dead, whereas soft mixing will just give a nice blend when I just want to lighten colour. But because I am doing clouds, I am going to want some properly white bits, so I've got the titanium there as well. I've got a, just a small touch of uh, French um, ultramarine and a burnt umber so that I can make a bit of black or grey. Some Naples yellow, some crimson, and then here I've got a Prussian blue and I've got a cerulean blue. So I've kept it very, very simple. Right? All of these you can get. The SAA have got their own colours now in oils. So um, I've got here I've got a low odour thinner and I've got um, a Winter and Newton um, painting medium. We can use linseed or something like that. And then I've also just got some cheap turps there for washing brushes out. Okay, so get, get going. <coughs> now lots of people do skies and lots of people make them up. That's fine, but do have a thing of studying real ones to start off with and then what you're making up is a bit more based on truth. I'm not one for painting like a photograph but I think studying and drawing and stuff are always good practice. So I've got this picture here, it's a source picture and I've chosen this deliberately because a lot of people when they do clouds in the sky they do the nice big round fluffy clouds which are lovely and there's a lot of them but you don't often see people showing you how to do this kind of cloud which are called um, mare, uh, mare tails, like on a horse, you know, they wisp out and everything. So what I do to start off with, is I take a piece of paper, I'm just going to pin it up here. There we are. And I like to get a feel for the picture, because I'm not going to slavishly follow this. So what we do have is we have got an horizon line, which would be straight, that's straighter, and we've got a bit of a mountain. And then we've got really the bulk of the white part over here, okay, which is wisping out, a bit of white there, wisping and wisping up, and then we've got some wispy bits there, wispy bits there. And then we've got, that's a bit darker. All the top is a bit darker. So this isn't going to mean anything to you. It doesn't mean an awful lot to me, but it's the process of doing it, really, that, that counts. And then we've got some sort of tingy, grey, yellowiness on the horizon. And we've also got the similar kind of colour to that as a reflection down from the mountain. And then we've just got a nice reflective blue sky. So now I know what it is that I'm going to try and achieve on my picture. So now we can get rid of this and put that in the bin. And what I will do to help myself just to start off with is I am going to put in the horizon line as a straight line because I'm a bit, what I am a bit finicky about is wonky horizon lines. Really there's no excuse for them, you know what I mean? Really. Okay, so there we are, let's pencil mark for that. So to start off with, I'm just going to block in some colour. I've got a nice variety of brushes here. Let's start with this one, I think. I've got quite a few of these which are long-handled. They're all old as time, so don't ask me where I got them from. And, um, but with them being old, it does mean that you can get a nice bit of reach and uh, keep away from the canvas so you can actually see what it is that you're doing. So I'm going to start off, I've got a bit of the um, low odour thinner in here, just a bit on, I don't want it soaking, but I want a bit on there. And I want to get in just some main areas, so 
to make sure that I've got everything in the right place really. So I'm going to start with a lump of the mixed in white. Now, when you work with oils, you're supposed to work thin to fat, right? Which means that your paint should be thinner when you the first layers and then get fatter. And the reason for this is that oils dry by oxidation, not by evaporation, right? So if you've got a big fat layer and then you paint a thin one over the top, the top one's going to dry out, the bottom one hasn't done, and as that dries, it's going to crack your top layer. So that's why we do it that way around. So I just picked up a bit more thinner, thinned it down. I'm just using paper plates here, because you can throw them away. All right, so I want some white over here, because this bit is all white. And just remember there's a bit more white over there. That's that then. Now, get in with some blue. I'm going to pick up some of this Prussian blue. And I just want a touch of white, just so that you can see the colour, because otherwise when you look at it, it just looks quite black. Just a touch of white in it. Thin it down just a little bit. Okay, so the darkest corner was over here. See, that's just, that is a little bit too dark. Pick up some white. What's lovely about oils is that you could just mix everything on the canvas. So we'll just, it gets a bit paler. So pick a bit whiter. A bit more. And then just scratch it around. Now coming up to that white there, work around it. And just get a nice layer on and keep it thin. Now, when they come down the picture, it gets lighter and lighter. And that's what skies do. As they reach the horizon, they get lighter. So there's, put a bit of white on the brush and then bringing that blue down, work it back up a bit. So that's strongly layered, which it's, you know, don't really want it to be quite that strongly layered, but just so that you get the gist of it, and then it gets lighter as well. Now as it gets, this is um, a green based blue, this Prussian blue, and I've actually, I have put in a bit here of uh, cerulean, which is also green based but it's naturally lighter, the pigment is different. And just so that I fully get in, let's stick a bit of this down here. I need some more of this mixing right now. And there's a bit too much. Paint on the brush and on here. Just gonna wipe a bit off. I don't want it too thick. Okay. Roughly, I don't want to lose that line. I want to know where it is. Okay. So then work back into the top. Just so you can't really see where one starts and the other one finishes. We'll work that in. Through to there. That'll do. Okay. So, I'm a bit of a messy person. Baby wipes are brilliant, they work on oils, it's a chemical in them. And so, just use liberally. Right, get the worst of it off anyway. then so I know that I've got a mountain 
something on the horizon. So I'm just looking for where's this one. So I'm going to put that in because then it's a point of reference then for where everything sort of wisps out a bit. So I'm just going to use a mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine to make a black. If you use ready-made black, it's, it's horrible. But if you make your black, it's got a bit more life because it'll always have a bit more of one than the other in it. So I just really want to make up a bit of a shape, really. We'll come back to that, but at least it's in place. And now then, okay. Now, before I come down, I want to get in this. Uh, this, this is like the trickiest part. This sort of off colour down the bottom, which I sort of want to blend blend up a bit. So I've experimented. It sort of works with this Naples yellow and a bit of the harsher white, I think. The Naples yellow is, you know, it, it is a form of yellow, but it's not so yellow that in that, with the touch in the blue, it's going to form a real strong green. You know, that's not what I want. I want it to be more foggy-like and then a touch of crimson into it. So... Not quite sure that's going to be right. Let's just see what that looks like. A bit too pink. That's a curse of red, isn't it? It's stronger than you want it to be. A bit more yellow in it. A bit more white in it. A lot more white in it, I think. Okay, let's see what this looks like. That's more like it. So you see, it's got a tendency to uh, verge towards green a little bit, but only just a tiny, a tiny touch. So let's see, see where we get with this. All right then. So I knew I shouldn't have thrown that away. Fresh piece of paper. Just hold that there. Just moving on. Okay, it's not brilliant, but it's getting towards what we want, really. I think a bit more white in it would help, and then I'm blending it in. So I've got a <coughs> really scruffy brush, if I can find it. What's that one? A bit more. Right into it. Let's go over here, got a bit more room. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's okay. So, that's just sort of roughly, really. And so, I've done a circular motion there, just sort of scrubbing it, scrubbing it in, and then back again. That's uh, still quite heavy, so I'm going to soften it with a different brush. Let's soften it out. Soften it out there. It's a bit too much to do to wipe it off. 
auch bei den And then just the top edge bit there. Soften it out. Come back down. And the thing is, you, with oils, you haven't ever got to worry about the fact it's going to have dried out on you. Because <laughs> it won't have done even a few months later. So, I wouldn't say that's finished, but I would say it's, at least it's in place, right? So we've got a bit of that going down with the uh, with the reflection under the mountain. So just to pick some up, let's put that in place now. Okay, and then pick up. Right in between those two blues I've picked up there. Now. I'm going to swap brushes and the reason for that is I like these flat edged brushes and I find them a lot easier to get a straight line with a flat edge than I do a rounded brush. That's a bit heavy, isn't it? Oh well. Yeah. Blend that back up. Bring that along. Bring that edge. There we are. Okay, let's kill some of the colour on this. Wash it out a bit. Here I'm trying to lift a bit of this, this colour off, here. Move it, there we go, that's a bit better. It's a little bit harsh. I wanted to blend into this a bit, so if I wobble that about a bit. And then bring this along. It's just a thin, thinner layer over the top there. down that mountain. It's going to have to come down to there, look. Because at the moment it's floating in the sky. Soften this away. A bit off. Okay, so that's turned out not too bad. Okay, well, I need to bring this mountain down before I forget. So, Let's 
go back, make it dark again. Ultramarine, burnt umber. Okay. So. Maybe I'll get that touch the scot the sea there. I knew this was going to happen. I'd make a fuss about having a straight horizon, and then I wouldn't achieve that. Here we go. Yeah, that's better. So it needs to know it's in the right place. That will, of course, need another layer on it, but that's all right for the moment. I should say, actually, before I go any further, I don't pretend in any way, shape or form I'm actually going to 100% finish this picture. And part of the reason for that is that doing a, a painting in a, what, you know, a short amount of time doesn't give you any drying time. And although it's a beauty of oil, the fact that it doesn't dry out completely, it is sometimes nice to have the picture to the point where it's touch dry. So that when you go put your next layer on, you could sort of reactivate it a lot if you needed to with the turps and stuff. But really, you can have the, the issue that you have with all paint is you can end up, you can be taking off more than you're putting on. So sometimes you need it to have formed a base on there properly. Okay, so we've got the basis of that going on. So now, it's all about getting the wispy bits in. Now this is all still, look, see this is all still totally, completely wet and everything. So we can work into that. Which is uh, easier said than done, isn't it really? Right. So, I've got a couple of different fan brushes actually. I've got these two sizes. And these are quite useful and will help me whisk everything through. And, um, right, so here goes nothing. Right, so we'll pick up some. I want my scratchy brush. Some soft mix in white on this. See how it looks on there. Okay, so we've got some white bits coming up here. At the moment, I'm just trying to roughly place things. I'm not worried too much about the finished article. Nice band coming across the picture. I need a bit coming down here. Quite a lot of white underneath here. Another sort of wispy. Definitely got some of this sort of direction going on, coming up through out there. Okay, and then we've got some bits over here. Okay, so that's it, like approximately. 
We want to clean this off now. Get the blue off of there. And I want to come back into this white patch and pull some of the white out. And then where I've put a bit more blue than I quite, quite like, stamping it down in the middle of it. Pick up a nice bit of white here. Okay, working up to that mountain. We want it just on a covering. Make sure you've got everything covered, you've not got gaps. that going on as a basis and some pale down this side just to show off the mountain really and then there's a touch within this of similar colour to this but a, a little bit more pinky actually See what that looks like. It's too pink. It's a bit more like it. So we're sort of about halfway ish really because it's just really about building up more detail in these clouds if that's all right. Should we have a quick break then? Yes, let's. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA, Society for All Artists, is here to inform, encourage, and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue, with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland, a devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. Best thing to be a member is, is the inspiration for the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seems like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Hello everybody. Okay, one um, thing I just should have done probably before the break, but if you have a nice big flat soft brush, what you can do is use it. Make sure you pull the hairs out first. 
just to soften down. You can see if it's thick, it would drag. Just to soften down your mark. Now, see, that's made a, that's a good one there. It's made a good difference there. Because where you've got sort of gaps because of the grain of the canvas, just lightly bringing that over. Let's get a cleaner edge there. Just smooths that out nicely. Okay, and then give this a little clean off. So the rest of this really <coughs> is just trying to build up and build up the cloud. So if we take some paint and let's work through on this. Okay, so following through this line here. And this one here. Now I've got a smaller fan brush. Best to moisten it off, really. Use it to pick up the paint you put down, to so spread it and lift it. There we are. And you see how much better, just straight away, those marks are than just using sort of a heavier, heavier kind of brush. So we come back to this just quickly, just to see we've got different depths of the wispiness and everything here. And that's what we're just aiming to build that up in all different ways, but our own little version of it. <clears throat> so... Now this, don't want it to, how thick or thin, really, just go with how it feels to you, I think. Don't have it too thin, because <clears throat> it'll just melt everything too much that's underneath it all. If you have it too thick, you're just going to have lumps. So have a go then, just put some marks down and spread it out a bit. There we are. Just see what happens. Now, you do have to keep making sure that your brushes are clean because it's going to be picking up the blue. Now let's try this. Now if I thin, if I thin this down a bit, and if you keep your fan. Make some marks like that, you see. You just have fun really making some marks. What you don't want, see that's gone too claggy. That's alright if you want it thick. But what you don't want <coughs> is fan brush, the nightmare. Look at that, it just goes as big, fat, lumpy bits. It doesn't stretch out at all. We don't want any of that. Okay. Now, blend in a bit more. Okay, 
you remember they're clouds right they're soft okay so you, as if it looks a bit too scratchy you've got to soften because they're water molecules in the sky they are not hairs now see I've gone in too heavy handed there my own fault Right, one important thing as well is if you do an area and you do it badly, I'm just going to do this, be brave, because it's about you learning rather than me. Okay, you can scrape off. That wasn't overly successful. <laughs> or lift off. There we are. And going again, going again fresh. So <clears throat> don't be afraid to make mistakes because you can correct them. That's a bit grubby looking. Take a bit of this, lift up there. bit of a white area down here. I'm going to make this a bit stronger white. Now this is why I've got the other two whites, you see, because the titanium white will be just a bit stronger at being a white. So blend and think like a cloud, right, because clouds do not have straight lines, right? So if you find you've done made a straight line like that, get rid of it. Right. What's the beauty of this? You know, like the whole sort of thing about where clouds have you know the tops and they have shadows and stuff underneath and everything. Because you've got a layer of colour underneath pretty much all of this, you let the colour work underneath your white, you see. It's a bit like if you've ever tried to paint a, a, an old piece of furniture that was, you know, somebody, if you had painted navy blue and you're trying to paint it white, you've got to put like three layers of white on and in, so, in bright sunlight you're still going to see that it was blue underneath, you know. So you use, you use that to help you. Now looking back at that, that's terrible. Do something about this. Might even be worthwhile actually putting some blue back into there. Not as terrible, that's a bit better, isn't it? That's better. Softer. So. We strengthen our whites, really. So we want them a bit stronger.
running out of fingers. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I'm going to leave it there because really I can't put on every single bit and every single layer but I think that I've shown to you, I hope I've shown to you where and what to do and where and why and um, have a go yourself and good luck. Hi, I'm Vic Bearcroft. I've created my half of the postcard and now I'm going to pass it on to my painting partner. What have you got for me, Vic? Half a skull. What are you trying to say to me, Vic? Are you calling me an old fossil? Okay, let's see what we can do with it.